Hello, my name is Manu from Explore in Czech. Welcome to our live stream. Uh, today we do a short DIY workshop about the uh, uh, transient modules for art, the random modules. And um, yeah, uh, today I'm here with Ronnie. Where is he? Yep. Hello, Ronnie is operating the stream. And uh, I'm here. Hello. And if you ordered something in our shop already um, and ask yourself who the hell is packing all these orders, it's us three. Yeah, uh, thanks to Bonedo for hosting the workshop. Um, One hand, uh, we have some, some visitors here. Warte mal. Ja, waren wir nicht online? Nee, du nicht. Ach so. Okay. I heard the, the audio was uh, still off. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Um, hello, my name is Manu from Exploding Shed. And uh, thanks to Bonedo for hosting the workshop. We do a Synth DIY workshop about the transient modules uh, 4R. It's a random module, uh, which can send random triggers to uh, bring your modular patch to life. I'm here today with Ronny. Uh, you have see already seen his face, but didn't hear the audio. Um, hey. And Andreas, he will solder for you. So everything <laughs> uh, about soldering will be in, in his hands and you can watch his hands doing the stuff. Um, I will do most of the commenting. And if you ordered something in our shop already, uh, Exploding Shed, and you ask yourself who is packing all these orders, it's us three, and uh, yeah, we organize all the stuff. Andreas is helping Hagen with development. Uh, he's also an electrical engineer. And yeah, on one hand, the workshop is for the registered uh, participants who bought the kit two weeks ago. We shipped it to their place, and uh, now we sold it in real time. They can watch the stream. We have a chat going on. So if you have questions uh, while soldering, you can um, write it in the chat, either you, the YouTube chat or the private chat. It's up to you. Ronnie can manage to um, take the uh, take the chat into the into the stream. So we can, if it's a question which is uh, interesting for everybody, we can. Uh, put it on the screen. Um, yeah, generally, if someone has a question, um, you can write comments in the YouTube chat. And if we have the time, uh, we will answer it. Yeah, the workshop is also meant as a general kind of introduction into Synth DIY. If, if, you are, if you are into modular and never sold your own modules, um, you might be interested, how, how does it look like? Uh, am I capable of soldering? Um, so we, maybe we can take away your fear a little bit. Um, yeah, good. Then I would say we switch over, or did I forget something? Um, no, I think we're fine. Yeah, okay. That's good. Uh, I would say we switch over to um, Andrea's camera and we will take a Take the kit. We do this kind of workshops every couple of months. And if you're interested in joining us next, next time as an uh, active participant, um, the best way to get informed, I think, is our newsletter. Um, it will pop up somewhere as kind of a banner in the stream. You can register yourself. Um, I have a delay, an audio delay here. Give me a second. OK. Um, um, 
yeah, what do we have? Um, we have some small com components, some bigger ones. We have the front panel and the PCB itself, the printed circuit board. And all the components will be soldered onto the printed circuit board. And in a minute, we will talk about what to do first. Uh, yeah. I would say let's sort out all the big components first, the, all the mechanical parts, because we will need this uh, later. And we, we will talk a little bit about parts then. And this kit was available in our workshop as two different versions, kind of versions. Um, you have to solder SMT or SMD, surface mount device, surface mount technology. Uh, it's very small parts. Maybe Andreas can show these kind of uh, parts in a minute. Um, it's very small parts and many people uh, fear a little bit to work with this kind of uh, parts. They are meant to, yeah. Maybe we can, it's a bit dark. Yeah, we will open it and then, then you can see it. It's normally meant for, uh, for machines to to solder them, so not for humans. So it's a bit difficult, it's very uh, tiny, but these ones are uh, possible to solder by hand. So we to we, we sold the uh, yeah, DIY kit as two different versions, as um, SMT already prepared, if you fear it. Uh, so you only have to work with the through hole components. And some of you will have to do the SMT by themselves. So we will go to the SMT then first, because normally you start with the most flat components, and these are the tiniest ones, so we will start with them. Otherwise, you can't solder them very good because it's uh, too crowded already on the, on the PCB. Um, generally, about soldering, for this kind of work, maybe you can show your iron. Um, you use this kind of pencil-like tips. There are also tips which look like a screwdriver. They are, I would say, too big for this kind of work. So this is the thing to go for. Um, then, of course, you need some tools, like the solder wire itself. And there it's also very important uh, what kind of brand, what kind of mixture, um, what kind of alloy you use. You can see here um, yeah, the brand, and it's uh, Stanol Kristall 611. Uh, we also sell this in the shop. We tested many, many different solders, and meanwhile, they are all lead free. Uh, in former times, leaded solder was still allowed, um, and it's on one hand, it's good that it's not allowed anymore. But um, the first generations of lead-free solar were quite difficult to work with. And this is far the best uh, we have found over the last couple of years. And that's why we sell it in the shop. Um, also very good is a wire cutter. It's absolutely essential because you need to um, cut off the legs of the components after soldering them. Then uh, maybe a magnifying glass for the very small components and these kind of, um, what heißt Pinzette eigentlich auf Englisch nochmal? Tweezers. Tweezers, yeah, the tweezers, right. Um, to hold the SMT components, it's absolutely essential for this. Then um, sometimes you need the normal pliers. Zange, yeah, very good. Um, if you have to pull or to push or to bend something, this is very good. 
Um, then we have the Lute Pumpe, Solar Sucker. You can, so if you messed something up, uh, you can heat, heat it up, heat, heat the solder up again, and then pump it away with this kind of pump. It creates a vacuum. Or a different version of that is you can use this uh, Entlötlitze. I don't know how this is called in English. Um, this is a different way to remove your solder if you messed something up. Um, the multimeter is also your best friend. You can measure resistances, for example, or you can just um, find short circuits in the overall circuit in the end before you power it up. That's, I would say, quite essential to, to do it before you fry components like ICs, etc. Um, yeah, then there's these flux pens. Um, there are different kinds of fluxes. The f but um, in the solder we use, there's already flux inside of the solder wire. Um, without the flux, the solder wouldn't um, melt and set down in a very good way. It would uh, create bubbles, and it's very uh, shitty to solder. And with these kind of Stanol stuff, it works quite well. Yeah. Um, good, Andy. Let's start. Um, yeah, or before we start, maybe we could talk a little bit about soldering in general for the people who actually don't solder this kit but want to grab some information about general uh, DIY. Yeah. Um, what what would you say? How much degree? Um, I'm, on the iron, I'm about three hundred and ninety, so everything about three hundred and sixty and four hundred degrees with this kind of solder wire. It's mm. perfect. Yeah, so, same with me. Yeah. I always use three seventy to three ninety, something like sometimes this. Sometimes I go higher, sometimes I go lower. So yeah doesn't make also it. depends on the duration how long you solder on one point that's yeah. and it's uh and it depends on the solder wire yes of course. totally dependent on the solder wire yeah. there are so many alloys and some some are meant uh for lower degrees some yeah. are for higher some, some so start at 140 degrees mm. under others of about 260 yeah i more. tried to read something on wikipedia about yeah. this and it was too complicated for me in the end. So I just want to know what works for me. And then the hundreds of combinations, what's in the yeah. solder wire and amazing some for hot soldering, some for small degrees. Yeah, good. Um, so everything generally about soldering, everything is um, about transferring heat from your iron with the medium solder wire in between and your components and the solder pads on the PCB. Maybe we can show a solder pad or how a PCB looks like. Yeah, can we do a close up? Yeah. Can you see it? Maybe I can... A little bit further away. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, there you see um, the places where the components go. You have these uh, silk screen print. There are also names written on it or values, so you find the positions easily. Different manufacturers do it in a different way. You have some t some write uh, component names or um, component numbers on it. Some write directly the values. Um, everybody does it a bit different. And then, of course, all these soldering points, soldering points are um, connected with each other uh, uh, over copper traces between these points you solder. And um, what you want to do if you solder, for example, a resistor into one place is you want to have a good solar connection between the leg of your resistor 
and the solder pad on the PCB. And you do this via uh, using solder wire, which melts and then bridges the gap between it. Um, that's gen generally about, about soldering. And um, this can look very smooth, very good. Um, or you can have these kind of bubbles. Maybe we can do a little bit of a painting or something. For the next time, I, I think we should prepare some pictures of nice and not so nice solder joints. Um, Oh. Wait. So where is it? There, there's my paper. Good. So if this is the PCB, can you see it? If this is the PCB and this is the leg of your component, for example, uh, you have this resistor here. No? And the resistor leg going through it. Um, in a close-up, it might look like this. You have the, the leg. If you see this kind of thing, and the solder melts like this and builds bubbles, this is always strange and suspect. Um, what you want to see is this PCB component leg and the solder should melt and then set down in this kind of volcano shape. This is the shape you want to see and oftentimes it's only about heat transfer. If you see these kind of bubbles um, you can just heat it up again and by transferring the heat, it might set down in a very smooth way, I would say. Good. Um, then let's start with the SMT components. Huh? Okay, yes. Um, yeah, maybe you can open the little box. So I use the tweezer to open this. It's much more easier. Lay them aside. So these uh, these parts, if you turn them around and see them from the back, there you have some writing on it, and you have always the. That's difficult to show now. Yeah, you will see it. Hey, maybe we should zoom in a little bit, huh? With the RX100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so. Kannst du so arbeiten? Ja. Ja, das ja. geht schon noch. Es kommt vielleicht ein bisschen runter. Ja. Okay. Okay. Ja, yeah, maybe you can show the part again. Uh, I don't know if you. There you can see. Yeah. You so, have, uh, there's one yeah. stripe. I can, there is a white stripe. This is the indication for the polarity, for the direction, uh, how you have to put it in into the circuit. And in this case, they have to show um, to, to this side. So the... Um... The orientation is this white dot. Ah, okay. In this case. In the left up corner from the IC. Yeah. This is facing facing downwards. So this is upwards. This is downwards later. That's why I talk from, about upwards and downwards. Um, top and bottom. And the white stripe has to align with the white dot. So, and how you solder this kind of tiny components is that you start with one of these um, solder legs. You 
you have these multiple points, you set a little bit of a of solar on one of them. Just like that. Yeah. Oh, you can yeah. see it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay. It. And then you can place your component and make all these little legs align to the solder pads. And then you can uh, solder just this one connection. And then you can uh, co control if it's really... Yeah, you can uh, hold in, it in place, in and line and so on. And you have still have the chance to move it a little bit around. That's why you start with one on the side. On one edges, one corner, and when this is correct, then you can solder all. I will do it. All the legs. Oh, I was wondering. About the noise and it's the soldering station. Mm. I thought it was coming from from the iPad. And it's in this in this uh, in the stream also. Nur mal so ein kurzes Sinus, ne? Also ein Brumm. Mm. Yeah. Um about soldering in general. The, it's good to place your iron in this corner between component leg. I mean, it's difficult, uh, more easy to explain with uh, through hole components. Um, you heat up the, the solder pad and the leg of your component at the same time. And equally, that's important because everything is about having the same temperature. And then you apply a little bit of solder. Maybe, is it possible to, oops, go a little bit like this? Yeah. It's not the best I'll, position for me. Now we can also move the camera, then uh, make a choice about the position, and I will. Want to myself? Not to me? That's good. Mach mal. This was perfect. Is it okay, Ronnie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Perfect. Okay. Good, then we'll see. Yeah, you start by heating up the component leg and uh, the solar pad. Then you apply your solar wire, you take away the solar wire, and then you take away the soldering iron. So this is... There was a question. Ah, it was too silent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Should we talk louder or what? No, uh, you have to uh, uh, scroll down. Ah. Oh yeah, many comments. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Nimmst du am besten mit auf den Schoß. Ja. Okay, I have only a stripe. On the component, you mean? On the component, you see the stripe. Yeah, the orientation again. So on the yes, on the I see there's a a, a gray line. Yeah, gray white line. Gray white line with the name on it, and the line indicates the orientation for the IC. And on the PCB, there's in in one corner it's up here when you see on the on 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 the. Um, Back from the PCB, there's a small dot. Yeah, it's there, there, and there. And here is the white line on this side. 
and the white line has to white lines on all three have to show towards this area here. Is that more clear? Um, by the way, we have a little bit of a delay in the stream, so um, okay. we might uh, get your your answers a bit late. Okay. Yeah, I think this was more clear. Mm -hmm. So maybe I will explain a little bit uh, about SMD um, soldering here. So I had this uh, little bridge about two pins and I try to remove it. The first step is if you don't have any um, solder pump or desoldering wire like this, then you can try it first with your iron, heat it a little bit up and um, pull, it, pull it away. Pull the solder away, yeah. Yeah, it's the same I did. So, or from... I was just right. building one of these kits prior to the workshop and so don't heat it up too long, but normally it doesn't will have a problem. Only if you heat it up for a long, long time, then it can be damaged. So now I had too much of uh, wire on this place, so I have to use some of my tools. So um, what can also work is if you have flux, if you don't have any uh, desolder pump or desoldering wire and you can't get it away, try it with flux if you have it. There are different versions. This is a pencil. Um, there are also honey. Mm. We call this honey. Yeah, Lüthunig. Lüthunig. I like these, uh, these pens. Drip it a little bit. I'm sure it's very chemical, but it works nice. The magic smoke appears. Okay. There's too much solder on this joint, so... So plan B. Plan B is the desoldering wire. Do you prefer this desoldering wire? Uh, for SMD components, yes. No. It's much better than the pumps. Pumps are better for through hole components. Mm. If you want to get the solder out of the holes, mm. it's much sometimes easier. But for SMD desoldering wire, is the. Yeah, yeah okay, that's choose. cool. So you lay it down on your on your joint and heat, heat it up. When it's got melt, you pull it a little bit away and you get the perfect. Mm wire point. Yeah. So first one is finished, so I start with the others. Oops. I use just a little bit, not just a little bit. Yeah, as uh, less as, as possible. Less as possible. Just the minimum. It's not so critical when you do uh, through-hole components because everything is bigger. But here, it's a bit difficult, especially for beginners, because you don't see uh, so good if the connection is well uh, compared to through-hole components. Yeah. I also heat up the first joint that I made for yeah. um, for a holding, mm -hmm. just in case that it's a bad solder joint. Because if you do your um, solder point on on one place and yeah, put your SMD same. part, I do everything with... again. Sometimes the first one was a bit uh, wackelig, you know. It's good to do them all again. Uh, by the way. If you can't follow this um, because we are too fast or something like this, the stream will be online. Um, so you can always uh, watch it later again. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And one other tip, if you don't have desoldering wire or flux or um, solder pump and you have bad connections or solder two, two pins together and can't get it away, you can try with some, with some um, flex wire. It also works. Ah, just just yeah. in case you want to finish this little, so, yeah, that's braided, it. yeah, braided uh, wire, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the the cheap version of. Uh, it's not the perfect, but it works. Yeah, good trick. I never heard it. Our plan is to take some uh, SMT tools and also uh, easy SMT kits in the shop over the next time. Whatever next time might uh, might mean. Also, uh, more and more small manufacturers like uh, Transient or Patching Panda, etc. Meanwhile, or ourselves also, um, we're working with uh, SMT components more often because we all in the scene, I think, uh, professionalized ourselves a little bit. And we have, meanwhile have machines for SMT placement, pick and place machines. And it's very easy to match these uh, grade between a full DIY and easy DIY where you only have to throw in mm. the big components. So, um, or you can also very easily go into the direction of offering complete modules, which was very tricky before when you, when you only do through whole components, it's a lot of work. So, with these kind of uh, parts, the machine can do part of the work at least. Okay. So, how is it with you, um, the people who did the SMD soldering? How far are you? We will check the chat. Because then, in the next step, we, we would move on to the resistors. So nobody is yelling? <laughs> yeah. No yelling, no screaming. Okay. Good. Then I would say, um, let's move on to the 100k resistors. It's two okay. resistors. Uh, yeah, there was a question. Please wait. Uh, we have a, some dudes uh, with ah, okay. just one. Done with the first one. Yeah. Good. So it needs some time. That's yeah, always difficult. Um, if you sit on this end, we can't see you. So you can't see, uh, you can see us, but we can't see you. So for those who want a super clear SMD soldering uh, points, it's good to have uh, a flux pen and desoldering wire. Yeah. It's, I think it's necessary for, for often SMD parts, but you can, after them, um, after you solder the pins, put a little flux on it and um, soldering uh, again, mm. it will look like it's, it's full flow better and looks like it's like from the machine. What so do you mean? You put flux on it? Put flux on it if you finished with your SMD part and mm -hmm. you and it works, but it looks like it's not the best mm -hmm. best style of SMD soldering. Put, put a little flux, flux on, on it, it and then do it again. Or do what? it again a little bit and okay. it gives some better the machine joints. trick. The machine. <laughs> uh, Cheating. Uh, 
brings me to another, to another point. We have these tweezers already lying around in our oh. in our shop, but we didn't put them in the in the shop. These ones, yeah, uh, will be available very soon. Maybe we can do that next week. Huh? Um, we also have these desoldering braid. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have another one. We have another some one, there, but, but we have some in the shop. Yeah, yeah, it's not listed in the shop already. Listed, yeah, because we had so much to do now. But uh, we can put it up. Maybe you can. Yeah, yeah. And then we will have some uh, magnifying glasses also. I think maybe these ones will. Yeah. The choice. They're very good. Yeah, so they are good. I yeah. use them daily for soldering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we tried all all the stuff before. And maybe you can show the flux pen for people who are interested. What what kind of brand is uh, it? It's also from Stone Oil. Ah. I bought it by Reichelt in Germany. Yeah. Or, but you can order it on Mouser or, or DigiKey or wherever you order some stuff. Mm. What's the name? What's standing on it? Um, it's Stanol Flux Stift X 32 minus 10 E. Flux Stift X. Okay, get the <laughs> Flux Stift X. <laughs> that's the real one. Sometimes the honey is a better choice, but that's, I think... It's a bit sticky. And, yeah, yeah, if you if you have very, very small components. It's um, a bit trickier, huh? No. Nah, or not. Ah, it it's, sticks, huh? It's, it sticks then. Yeah, it helps sometimes if your component is very yeah. small, like on this on this PCB also, the uh, one six or three sizes. Mm. If you put flux on it, it um, can can Yeah, it can holds flow the component on the, on, on the point. So yeah. it's laying on the uh, mm. by the side, and mm. you try to solder it. Sometimes it helps, and it's yeah, it builds a small bubble yeah. and doesn't uh, go away. Yeah. So so quickly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have too much SMT uh, knowledge myself. Mostly, I did uh, THT, the bigger components. And I did all the cables. If you buy cables in our shop, mm -hmm. I did all the fucking cables over years and years. And um, but now Andreas joined me a little bit. Um, so yeah, much to do recently. Sometimes there are many orders about cables, and we yeah. didn't have to find the time to make all of them. Yeah, cables are nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, these days I'm mostly in the in the office and. Or packing orders. <laughs> Good. I don't know. Could we go to the first resistors? Let's ask the chat. And maybe let's just start with the two resistors. Oh, we have many of them. And then, yeah, we have many of them. And who has a little bit of experience? Um, maybe they can. Rose hole sometime there. <laughs> Again. We start, there's one uh, one belt with only two resistors. This is the value uh, 100k. If you want to prove this, you can also take a multimeter and measure them. Yeah, the thing with these uh, resistors is you hold the body of the resistor and then you bend the legs directly at the body in a 90 degree angle. And then you should have um, the exact measurement which fits into the PCB. So if you put these in place now, um, do you need the picture, Andreas? Uh, maybe you can see it. Yeah. I found the first one. 100k. So let's see, where's the other one? 100k. It's between the microcontroller and yeah. the first here. Yeah. TL. Yeah, is it? Is it online there? Yeah. Is this number two? So. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Connie is bringing it up. Yeah, that's too far. 
или first page. That number two is it? This one. Yeah, you can show it. There it is. These two are the 100K resistors. You put them into place. And then you do it like Andy. So yeah, I bend them, put them in place. Sometimes I hold them on the back or I just flip the board really fast and control if they're laying flat on the PCB. Um, there was one comment. If you hold the PCB the other way up, it will be the same as the build manual, which would be easier. Um, oh. In the build manual, this uh, small stripe is to the it's... right, like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like that, it's easier to identify, huh? Very good. Okay. Then you turn it over. I mean, what you can do, um, you can use all kind of fancy holders, etc., blah, blah. But I would say the, the easiest thing is still just to put it flat on your table, turn it around, and then go for it. Um, <clears throat> What you can do if you fear that your components fall out, you can um, you can bend the legs a little bit like this. You can open open them a little bit, but in the workshops we did, oftentimes uh, we have seen it that people bend them over like this. Um, they hold in place very good, but that's at the same time the problem because if you want to remove them later, if you messed it up. Uh, you have put a resistor in the wrong place or so, and you want to desolder it again, then you can't get it out of the PCB again. That's uh, very difficult then. So I would say maybe do it like Andy did, just a little bit. Then they don't fall out, and then you can put them on the table, and you can solder. Another thing which could be interesting I will show it in a minute. So here you see very clearly um, the important thing is the solar wire, which melts, builds the bridge between your component leg and the PCB, the solder pad on the PCB. So first you heat it up. And you heat the leg up and you heat the, the soldering solder pad at the same time. If you only heat the leg, apply solder, and the solder pad and the component leg are not in an equal temperature, mm. the same temperature, um, the solder itself might maybe look like a correct solder joint, but you don't have a correct mm. solder joint. So sometimes, and sometimes you have these bubbles sitting on the PCB. Then that's quite shitty. What you want to see is this, the volcano shape. If you have a bubble, just put your iron to it. Maybe a little bit of fresh solder because then new flux comes into the place, and then it sets down like this. Yeah. Normally, it's easier to do a little bit of solder before you soldering the joint on your. On yeah, your tip. because then the heat transfer is better. Yeah, then. that's right. Yeah, everybody has to find uh, his her own um, method. Yeah. Um, sometimes, especially if you had more components uh, on the PCB and which have different heights, so it might wobble around while soldering, what you also could use is this kind of... Um, stuff. It's very nice. Is it? Was it written here? Oh. Two gun. Hama. Adhesive paste. Haftpaste. It's very good for product photography. 
and you could use it like stabilizing your board or whatever with that um, and it doesn't leave any residues <clears throat> on paper or wherever so just wanted to mention this trick okay Andy so the 100k are finished so I mm -hmm. cut them apart yeah cut cut the legs off and if you cut off legs, generally it's a good idea to hold them with your finger and then cut them because otherwise <clears throat> they can fly around. And in the worst case, they fly into your eye or also very nice in keyboards, like or synthesizer keyboards, yeah. you know, and then they're gone. Or your PC or some... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Or it's in the lights on the carpet and then you uh, have it in the feed next time. Okay, then uh, let's go over to the 18 times 10k resistors. This bunch it's of resistors. The largest yeah. amount. It's the belt with 18 Ooh. resistors. Then you can cut them off and. So I will do it in two times so I don't have to cut too many of them and mm. they're laying around and. Yeah. Hey, I must say, the picture quality is much better than in the first workshop we did. It looks very good. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we we also tried to work on the on the audio. We have these fancy lavalier microphones microphones now. So hopefully the sound is better, and the picture is better. And thanks to Ronnie, he's very good with streaming. He has these uh, sequencer talk. Uh, he streams every week, so he has a lot of knowledge about this, and this helped, of course, with gaining the quality here. Um, by the way, I think the next online workshop will be in late April or early May. Uh, I would like to Put it online as fast as possible. Um, and we want to build these three ton uh, MF22 stereo filter um, MS20 inspired filter. Very good sound. And we had one batch there and sold it super fast. So we thought um, maybe you can do a workshop with that. Possibly this will do. This will be the next one. And the way um, you get informed about this, the best thing is you uh, just join our newsletter. By the way, you get a, a five euro discount code if you join now uh, in in March. It's our birthday, birthday month. Who who didn't know? Uh, we are five years old now. <laughs> we made some nice um, actions this month with dis discounts and stuff. And uh, who joins the newsletter this month will get a 5 euro discount code for April. Then it's active from 1st of April, I think. Okay, Andy was mm, fast, huh? One. No, same thing again. First, heating up the component leg and the solder pad, then apply a little bit of solder. In the solder wire is included flux, which makes it set down very smoothly. No, I've done only one leg of these resistors. Because that's also a good point. If you have uh, components with different highs, so it's good to solder only one leg first. Uh, turn it around and have a look if your components are flat to the PCB. So then you can control it. And if your component is too far away from the PCB, you can only heat the 
that, that one joint up and um, push it to the PCB and you're fine. If you soldered um, the whole component, also the two by the resistor, the two joints, and your component is maybe a centimeter or so uh, away from your PCB, it's much more diffi difficult to bring it, up, uh, bring it back so you have to heat up the two legs. Mm. So, so you have only... I'm, yeah, I'm often doing this like I'm just soldering once. Yeah. Turn it around, have a look. It's everything fine. Fits it perfect. So mm. then I start with the others. Yeah, very good. Yeah, there was a question about... Uh, about the order. Why you solder in this order? Um, mostly you start with the most flat components because if you turn your PCB on top, um, or if you start with high components on the PCB, like uh, polarized capacitors or so, you turn it around, you solder it, and then you put in in the next step, the um, the more flat components like resistors or so, you turn it around, and of course you have this offset uh, of the big capacitor, and they will fall out. So you start with the most flat components, and then slowly you work your way up. That's the way you normally do. Or in in other cases, you have like with these um, op amps, which are the S&T op-amps, which Andy did first. Um, if the whole PCB is, is crowded with parts, it's very difficult to reach these, these areas to solder it correctly. So that's one thing I would say. You work your way up in height. So it's like I said, if you have start with the flat ones, you can easily turn it around and lay it on the ground. If you have all different kinds of components on the PCB already, mm -hmm. and it's laying like this, yeah. you have to put something in, you have to hold it with your finger. And yeah, it falls and... out, etc. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's good to, uh, to think a bit in, in levels, height levels. Do all the stuff at once, which has the same height. Yeah, you hold the body and just bend the legs directly at the body. And then normally you have the spacing. Uh, of the holes in the PCB. Yeah. It depends on the designer. Yeah, it depends. I mean, you can also use small components like this, small, uh, small resistors, but build a a long bridge with it because other traces are going under it on the back side of the PCB. Sure, that's possible. But oftentimes it is like this. Do we have any questions about soldering right now or everything fine? Not really, but we can do a little bit uh, of a chit chat. So if you have any other questions, yeah, just ask questions. We try to answer them. So. It's a bit like meditation.
Yeah, still 18 times 10k resistors, 10 kilo ohm. And in this build manual by Transient Modules, he also wrote the color code. Brown, black, black, red, brown, for example. Um, if you don't have a multimeter to measure them, I mean, in, th in this kit, you don't have to measure them. But if you cut them off and, and mix them up or so, you can identify them by the color code. You also find tools on the web. And yeah, if you Google for resistant color codes, you will find all the information. Or you just use the multimeter to identify them. OK, and he goes. So first he does only one, one leg mostly. Oh man, difficult question. What's the best selling DIY module? Whew. At Exploding Shed. Difficult. It's difficult. So it's different every day. Yeah, but yeah, sure. But it, I would say a Faco Rampage mm -hmm. is huge. What's the difficult? The nee, difficult. Nee, nee. The best. Best selling. Best, best selling. selling. So it depends. It's a wave like, yeah, I would it, say. It changes, of course. But Befaco Rampage is kind of huge. Uh, Robox, the Robox modules are quite huge, but also uh, Sonic Potions, Sonic is, potions um, um, the mail, the, the quantizer, the quantizer, yeah. yeah. Mail two, was it? Yeah. Here it is. Mm -hmm. It's very easy, uh, and it just works. And uh, Befaco Stereo Mix. Yeah. Very good module. Simple, but very good. Because you need mixers anyway. And there are more and more uh, stereo modules on the market. So you need stereo mixers. And you can. Also use it as a mono mixer. Yeah, yeah. sure. And yeah, expand sure. Expand it with the um, with the hex mix and hex pandor. Yeah, with the... yeah. It's a complete mixing system. Yeah, Befaco did a great job on this, definitely. So I think they're all good. And I think this is also a reason why um, three tone modulars um, BF. Yeah, how is it called? MS22 MS, uh, is going so well because it's one of the few stereo filters. You need filters anyway. So, Adak has also a stereo filter, I think, yeah? Hmm. yeah. Okay, so one... Uh, oh, I missed one. One participant asked us in the chat to show us the in the private chat. In the in the pri private chat, yeah, to show us the SMT components. So we will have a look at this. In the meantime, let's do some other things. Ah, 
Ah, three tom modular. Hey, how is it, man? We just chatted on Instagram today. Uh, I'd love to hear about how you guys got started five years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I was doing uh, DIY work workshops as Leaf Audio for a long time and driving around since 2009, about. And um, in 2015, Hagen and I thought maybe now it could be the time for for opening a shop because in 2010 it was I guess very difficult and also we we were not prepared for it at this time um, yeah it came all from these workshops scene um, and we were super busy all these years did a lot of nice workshops all over the place and then we said hey let's start a shop but we had no money uh, but we did it somehow and we bought a couple of Bifaco modules and uh, cable material and stuff and just did what we did all the time um, but also started distributing stuff in a very small uh, small scale at first and we just built it up with uh, lots of a lot of manpower many ideas, no money, and we just tried to do it. And there were really more than more than two, three situations where we had the feeling it doesn't turn out very well or we're going bankrupt in the next minute or something like this. Um, yeah, but we did it. Also, very interesting situation was uh, when we release the sound box we did a pre-sale with the sound box in i don't know three years ago or so and it was our first own product which sold so good or which had so many generated so many so much interest at superboot and then we had the production process worked it out and everything was ready and so um, we did a pre-sale we had, I don't know how many, but it was kind of a lot uh, of pre-sales. And PayPal just uh, detected, hey, here's an increase of income mm -hmm. very suddenly. And then they had a look, why? And they, they have seen, oh, it's a pre-sale. And they <clears throat> just grabbed all our money. Everything was frozen. 20,000 euro were just frozen. And we didn't have the money uh, to to produce the product that was the point so we had to organize private money to put it into our company to be able to deliver we had to prove we have delivered and then they released our money so we were almost bankrupt just by paypal uh, freezing our account and they they took everything which came in afterwards so they grabbed everything and just <clears throat> had frozen it over, I don't know, two months or something like this. Oh, okay. mm. That was that crazy. Yeah. Can that... you remember you sat down and, uh, at the evening and you told me the story and it was completely unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. And I tried to talk with them and everything. Pff, no chance. I mean, I can understand it that if somebody does a pre-sale for a non-existing product, that's not a sale. That's, uh, that's a Kickstarter. It's a different mm -hmm. thing. But uh, we had everything ready to go. And uh, yeah, we had stuff like this. It was uh, interesting, I would say. And we still do DIY stuff, packing, packing orders every day. And we like it to get in contact with people. And um, it's still something which is kind of meaningful because we want we want to do this it's not a fucking job it's the thing we want to do yeah anyway so is it still 18 uh, 
No. 10K? It's the next one now. I'm on the next one. I'm on a 1K, I think. The now then, point. number four is four times uh, 24.9K. Oh, okay. So which oh, one I is it now? It's the 1K, so, but I can change them. I just mm. only yeah. plug them in. Okay. No problem. Okay. Let's do. In the manual, it's number four. Four times 24 0.9 K and I'm sure this is a pretty accurate resistor I mean um, all these resistors are metal film resistors with a tolerance of uh, 1% uh, it depends there are also 1%, 5%, 10% resistors yeah, but this usual metal film stuff which we all also use it's uh, always one percent, but you also have these one one point one uh, zero point one percent. Yeah, but they also are five percent. I think yeah. yeah, the cheapest ones are five percent. Uh, yeah, we we always use these uh, one one percent thingies, but I don't know. Maybe this is. A very accurate one. Sometimes you need very precise ones if you want to, if you use it to generate very specific voltages, for example. Like for VCOs or something. Yeah, for you VCOs, if some... for the one volt per octave uh, mm -hmm. thing. Tricking. And so, or we used, we used, uh, we used very accurate ones in the NTBA module. It was a digital oscillator with a, with a switch. So the 24.9 are on the ICs on the top and on the left side. Yeah, on, on the directly top. above and below the, the ICs and on the side of the first one, of the top one. Yeah, same thing here. Heat up the stuff with the iron, apply the solder. Yeah, there are multiple ways of soldering. I mean, you can also put the solder wire first, heat, heat up the solder wire, and it directly melts onto the solder joint on, onto the surfaces. So then, because having a little bit of uh, s fresh melted solder in place uh, raises the chance for a good heat transfer. Yeah, hold the legs, cut them off. And how does it look, Andy? Well, it looks fine. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. we will do the 1K, the last one. Good, then it's 0.5 in the manual. Eight times one kilo ohm resistor. Yeah, you have already cut them.
All right. Yeah, good. I'm finished. <laughs> How about the others? Where are they? So, how about you? Did you manage the resistors already or where are you on the 1k maybe i can show at the moment how i desolder um some joints if you accidentally put um solder on another component That's the best way for the solder pump. If you have any, oh, I can show it easily. I take only, I take here a place. And if you have put accidentally solder on this point, you can use the pump. You load it like that, <laughs> heat the joint up, put it in push the button and if you've done it correctly it should um, go away yeah, that's so, always a bit tricky if you fill the holes accidentally so i don't know if you can see it or saw it it's fine already yeah it's free again free yeah another method is to use um can you show this again please the whole process. Yeah, okay. So if you have a bad one, like here, you put solder on the wrong place. Yeah, sometimes it it happens that you accidentally close uh, holes, etc. Heat it up. Yeah. Yeah. The, the pumps reheat it. So that was not enough. So let's see. I mean, in the absolute worst case, you can also use a small drill with a Dremel or so. What I recommend, uh, recommend first is use an old uh, lack from a resistor or so mm. that you cut it apart. Mm. The best way is to, to hold it with a tweezer. You don't have to... Um, yeah, it gets hot otherwise. Getting hot. And heat up the joint, mm. push it through, and put it away, and it should be fine. So, yeah. Many tricks. So can we, should we start? Yeah, the then ones? let's go over to the um, 22 
Pico Fahrrad Capacitors. Capacitors? Ja. Yeah. 22. Okay. It's the small ones. They have a spacing of. Um, That's four of it, yeah? Yeah, four. Four capacitors. This one's. And they have a spacing of 2.5 millimeter grid. So, this one thing that's the small points, yeah. Yeah. Three, so three of them are in one row on the right side of the PCB. So these kinds of capacitors have don't have any uh, orientation. Yeah, so they have no polarity, so it doesn't matter. Like like with resistors, you can put them in this way or the other way. Uh, that doesn't count. Uh, there will be some some parts with which have a clear orientation, so where it's necessary to put them in a specific direction, but not with these ones. Um, here, the same thing. Uh, they fall out quite easily. Um, you could bend these legs a little bit so they don't fall out completely. But... Can you show this? Like I do it on the edge, but you have to be yeah, a little bit... but not too much. So they hold in place, yeah. Yeah. I, I always do it, they are wobbling around all the time. That's very essential, I think, to do only one leg first, and then you can heat it up and move it in, yeah. the, in the correct position. So oftentimes, if you put it on the, put it on the back, and then they, they are standing like this, you know, yeah, yeah. but not straight. So if you, if you, even if you solder them in this way, but only with one leg, you can heat it up and make it straight. Yeah, yeah. Because That's make also it straight. My, my way to solder components. Yeah. I only solder once, turn it around, have a look if yeah. it's if it's uh, flat or is it not straight or so. Yeah, or sometimes it it blocks the space of an, of the next part which comes next yeah, to it or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have a look first on your PCB. Often you or every time you have a manual for your um, DIY, DIY um, links, but it's good to have a look. And if you sold it many, many, many kits or sold it often, you, you, you know, and take a look, okay, maybe I should start there or. Yeah. Yeah. Do one first. So what that looks fine. So that's it. Good. And then the next components will be the seven times 100 nanofarad capacitors. They look kind of the same, but they have a spacing of uh, five millimeter and shorter legs. And possibly they are uh, even more difficult to, to solder because they are super wobbly. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice that Ronnie can insert the the pictures from the manual in the stream. That's super fancy. Yeah, we will do more workshops like this. All right. Yeah.
I crashed two modules with desoldering. Yup, welcome to the club. Me too. <laughs> I fucked up our own module. Really? No. <laughs> I couldn't make it work. There was something with switches and I, I messed up the orientation of the switches. And then, uh, I don't know, I didn't manage to get it to work. Because I, when I when I uh, pulled out the switches, yeah, I pulled out the complete tube, you know, the, the, oh, the Durchkontaktierung uh, to the okay. other side, yeah, and then I had to fiddle around very hard. I I was drilling holes into the PCB and was working with wires and blah. And yeah, such a shit. <laughs> but I didn't manage. Yeah, I also had one or two bad modules at home. Put them in a box and. Yeah, <laughs> put them in a box of shame and then yeah. just forget about it. <laughs> uh, everybody has this. But of course, it's really a shit if you buy a Befaco hex mix and you mess it up and you don't find the mistake. It's That's difficult then. Maybe not the best uh, <laughs> uh, uh, one to start DIY. <laughs> okay. So I had this problem with the hack mix. I, I forgot to solder uh, a transistor leg. Yeah. And um, one LED was not going, but and, but it's worked hmm. in most cases. And just only the LED. Hmm. And I tried to find it. And that's our two PCBs. I have, yeah, two PCBs. And the uh, transistor is on the first. So the hmm. other one is over the other. And you can't get them easy away. And oh, yeah, what is really friendly uh, to do is the Sonic Portions modules. It's super friendly, very easy. Next time we need some background music. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to make a nice patch on the modular. So, yeah, really. Um, good. The next thing is normally the electrolytic capacitors, but they are bigger than the diodes. Yeah. I would say let's. Let's switch uh, this with the next step. So we do the diodes first. It's, uh, we go to number nine and then go back to number eight because mm. the capacitors are higher than the diodes. Let's do the diodes. So this is another component which has a polarity. You see on the body of the component, you see a black body with a white stripe. Ah, yeah, there. On the right side, you see this stripe. There it is. This shows the orientation. And you will find this stripe on the silk screen print of the PCB. So it has to look like this. Yeah, there. In this direction, yeah. Stripe on stripe. Yeah, one is in this direction and the other is in the other direction. Facing towards the right and left side of the PCB. Yeah. 
Det er Another thing uh, we could mention is that if you have some um, some solar pads, some component legs, whatever, which are very close to each other, then you have to look if they can have a contact, if it's intended to be like this, or if they have to be separate. And um, if there are some some points very close together and it's not intended to bridge them, you should come from the side where you have, you, you should come with the iron from that side where you have lots of space because this, the, the solder always goes to the place with the most heat. Yeah. And um, so, as an example of the diodes, not between these two, some just from one side and yeah, the other. Side. Then you come from this side where you have lots of space because this is the direction where the solder will flow to. So, this is how you can control uh, in which direction it flows. Good. And then, uh, then we have these transistors, 2 and uh, the capacitors. 3, 9. Missed, Ach so, we capacitors. capacitors. Yeah, we have to go back. We have to go back. We missed out the capacitors. Um, electrolytic capacitors, 10 microfarad. So, they are also polarity. They have a polarity. They have one short leg and one long leg. This is how you can identify it. Long leg is plus, short leg is minus. And on the minus side, you also have this stripe, which a little minus sign normally included in the stripe. And on the PCB itself, you mostly have a mark for the plus means. You have to find the direction, how it's correct. And then you have to bend the body of it. Uh, sometimes you have it that they are meant to stand upright. And sometimes if the module is very uh, flat, thin, however, if uh, space is the thing, is a thing there, um, they are built in, in a lying position. And then you have to um, flip them over before you solder it. So if you if you solder them in, just stick them in, solder them, then you can't bend them over anymore because um, the legs are too short and you will ruin it. Yeah. Then you just check the polarity again and if it's really correct like this, and then you can solder them. I must say that this module is relatively friendly. Um, on some modules, you have very small solder pads. It's just very tiny rings, and it's very hard to get a contact for your uh, for your solder wire for your solder. Here, it's also very. Narrow everything, but it, it still works quite fine, I think. The transistors are not so big, but the other ones are fine. Yeah, but, uh, big enough. Yeah, good. Then you have to cut off the legs, and the next thing is then the transistors. You have three components which kind of look like the same. They have the same package, it's called package, the form, form factor, it's called package. Um, in my kit, they, they haven't been on a belt, so they were single. It might be that you have three thingies which look totally the same. Um, and then you have to identify what is what. 
uh, best do it by a magnifying glass. And then you can just read. Uh, mm. Use the, use the big one. Yeah, I think most of the people can see it by itself. It's, <laughs> I think, the best way. Yeah. You have these uh, 3904 transistors, and one is a voltage regulator. This is called uh, 7805. So you have to identify this. They look the same, but different function. So then... You take the transistors first, 2N3904. Um, you possibly have to bend the, the middle leg a little mm. bit into mm. the direction of the back. Holes there. I would describe the flat, the flat side as the front and the round side as the back. Yeah, it's so it's they have a, an orientation. Too. They have an orientation on the PCB. Yeah, and you see the form factor also printed on the PCB. And there, it's um, as the module is only two HP. It has to be very uh, has to be pushed down quite far as far as possible to the to the PCB so that there's as less space as possible. And you can do it like Andy does it. Put them in place and then just press and wobble around a little bit. And normally um, they hold in place very good and they don't fall out. Oh, and then just solder it. Okay. Yeah, looks good. For me, it looks fine. You can bend them afterwards, just a little bit. But they're mm -hmm. flat enough. Yes. Yeah, good. And then the next thing is this voltage regulator called uh, 7805. And this comes on the lower Near by the power. Yeah, on the lower edge of the module. Same thing. Push it in as far as possible. Orientation is essential. So how about you? How is it going? Do you have any questions? Yeah, good. 
Then the next thing is the power header. So we need our... No, we need the mechanical parts. Power header. There it is. And there it's possibly... Um, normally it's, it's uh, put through the PCB, but as this is a super small, super uh, flat 2HP module, he has done it in a different way, which is also very clever. Um, you put the PCB itself between the legs of the power header. And... So it has a connection on both sides. Yeah, so. it has a connection on both sides. Um, orientation is not essential here, because it's always the same on one pair. You have uh, plus 12 volt on one side of the header, minus 12 volt on the other, and everything in between is um, ground. ground. So, and what you what you have to do is you have to add a little bit of solder to at least one of these points, because otherwise the header will fall off you, you need to create a little bit of thickness now. So it's the same thing like um, SMD soldering right here. I put a little bit of solder on one point. I used um, the middle one because sometimes if you heat them up, these plastic bends, uh, bends as fast. So you yeah, can the use plastic the uh, heats up quite quickly and then these legs... They bend. So. Okay. And for the uh, middle one, it's easy. I can use my fingers, and it didn't get hot. So, bring it on the point. Keep this joint up and push it in place. So, if it's look like this, it's fine. Then we can solder the others. Yeah, we had a question here um, about the power connector, which looks differently. Um, I'm waiting for an answer now. But that's the way, yeah, you, you put it on you have to be have a little bit of pressure, then it holds by by itself, and then you can just solder it. You can it's, reheat it and switch it a little bit if it's not well, in place or so. It's like super big SMT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and um, you have to keep the soldering duration um, as short as possible with these kind of components because um, the plastic melts sometimes quite fast and then these pins just fall off or stick through yeah. in a strange way and, and they are very stiff. Okay, I have to look over here. Isn't it the same one? Looks the same. Yeah. So it's a two row. Yeah. Okay, I'm listening. Two rows are not angled. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, it's two rows and straight, not angled. This one, uh, the power connector, the power header has two rows and is straight. And you put... So Oops. it goes between the PCB. I was also confused at the first time. 
but it's a two row and it's straight and you put them between the PCB and solder them on both sides. Yeah, that's the that's trick. The way. So I think I'll, I'll explain it again. I choose one of these um, points. It doesn't depend on, on this side or the other side. Mm. So maybe this one is easier because your components um, upwards. So you put a little uh, solder on one point without oh. the component and then do it like we at the beginning with the s and part. You pick it, heat it up, push your component on place you wait until it's it's uh, sticks and maybe yeah. you have to rejoin it a little bit and yeah. then you can easily solder your the other ones yeah i do it a little bit differently <clears throat> i would i would do uh, i would put a little bit of solder on two points or something and then you know on one side and on the other side yeah you can do it like that also yeah. Stick it on so it has some pressure and it holds, and then solder the others first, and then the first ones. But there are many ways which lead you to the to your goal. Everybody has to find his own preferences there. Yeah, here it's easy with the one six millimeter PCB because this joins between this to this rows. <clears throat> Sorry, um, fits perfect, so it doesn't. Yeah, yeah that's cool, direction. and it's a cool way to keep the whole module very flat mm. in the end. It's good. Okay, um, so what's the next thing then? Ah, uh, then yeah, now we have to fiddle around a bit with the mechanical stuff, especially with these. Uh, now we come to these angled headers, mm -hmm. and. It should be seven, seven of them in total. They are all the same, but first we only use two of them. And what you have to do is, I would say it's best done with a plier, pliers. Um, you have to push the plastic part down as far as possible. To the on angle? These, on the, yeah, in, yeah, into this angle, yeah. But when I tried Ooh. it, it was more uh, pushing through the, these kind of pins into the plastic and not the other way around. So you have to push the plastic down into the angle. Go like this, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> you can't look uh, <laughs> on the screen. Oh, on it's the finger, fair. it's very hard, but it also works. But if we have a tool, I use the tool. Yeah. Okay. And when you have this, uh, you can take, there are two jumpers included in these mechanical parts, two small jumpers. These ones, um, yeah. This ones. <clears throat> and now, what's quite easy is to Put these, wait. Yeah. To put this on the thingy. And then you can hold, you can hold this better because mm. otherwise you get a hot finger, you know, when you solder it. That's a good point, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. 
I've done it like this and it worked quite well. And you can push it as far, yeah, you can push it as far uh, down on the PCB as possible because otherwise it uh, it's too thick. For me, it also works to hold it on the plastic thing. Yeah, yeah. With, with, my, with my yeah, with a finger uh, with nail. nail. Yeah, and then it's super flat and perfect in position. Mm. And yeah, um, it's even better. So I would I, say, I use my solder wire and make a little. Mm. Let it stand up, turn it around, and go with my PCB in position. Yeah, it's the same thing I do. And then do one first, then you can control everything if the angle is right. And if it's correct. You can do the next one. That's a good idea with the chompers. Yeah, because this is always the point. You you get a fucking hot finger. If it smells like chicken and so on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then control it if the position is correct. And this is uh, actually really for putting these jumpers on. By them, later you decide um, if the if it should work unipolar or bipolar. So if it only works between zero and, and five volts, or it's uh, if it really is from minus volts to plus so and i think we have to um cut them also yeah away yeah yeah we have to cut it off because um this is the side actually this is left and right of mm. the module and it has to fit into these two hp thing it stands upright and then it has to be flat in the end so you will have a free HP module. <laughs> yeah, with included, uh, possibly power starving or whatever <laughs> random function might appear. Included circuit bending. <laughs> Super. Then you have to do the same thing to the other angled pin headers. Um, yeah. With one difference. I think I have to use my PCB. I read it maybe. No. Yeah. It's this now. We have to push this plastic yeah. again into the angle. But with the difference that the space between these lower part and um, and the plastic body has the thickness of the PCB. Yeah, I used. Um, I, I mean, you can use, yeah, you PCB. can do it in a different way. Just show it in your way. So my idea was to take take the connector. Hold it on the PCB with one hand, with the finger straight, mm -hmm. and then push push, push um, the plastic, plastic down. down. Oh, yeah, if it works, yeah, right. And this will then actually connect the two PCBs, the small PCB with the jacks, the audio jacks. So, and the main PCB. Ja. Schlimm mittig halten. <lacht> Ups.
All right. So I think we have to put the plastic side on our big PCB. Or oh, how does it look um, like in yeah. the manual? Um, ah, the okay. plastic yeah. the plastic side is sitting on the PCB, and then the actual angle is over the PCB, over the plastic plastic bodies hanging in the air. Yeah. Looks like that, yeah? Mm. yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and this is the place where the second small PCB will be connected then. Okay. Do I want to do all of them in once or start only with one first? So I think I will do one by one. It's easier. And do the same thing. So try just doing one on any connector. Oops. <laughs> the example hole. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's very difficult. So Once it was closed, even if it's open, uh, the diameter is then reduced. And Especially very tricky when you have components with six legs or more or something, and you have some of the holes were closed once, and you had to open them. Especially if you have solder two legs and have to push them both together and have a yeah. big distance between, and you can't put your solder solder iron between those two, two pins. So you have my sometimes I yeah, then you need change. Uh, Quickly as possible from Air one flow. to the other. <laughs> okay, now it I looks think like we can speed up a little bit. Okay. I think. Uh... So I have the idea to put the other PCB first, push them through the holes where it has to be. Why? To, to bend it in the, in the right Yeah, angle, just to see if it fits already or I have to solder it in another position. Mm. So I will push it down, heat up this joint again. One by one. Yeah, on this special trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you only did the first ones of each, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Already. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah then perfect. Yeah, so. You still have the chance to uh, to change just, the adjust them. Change the the angle. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. And if this fits, I mean, you can also control it just by by viewing it from the side and then you can do all of them.
So I knew what was your first DIY module. My first DIY module it was a cable. <laughs> <laughs> my first Eurek DIY module, maybe. My first DIY module was something built by my own, I think. But the first Eurek module DIY, oh, um, good question. I think it was from Transient or Bifaco. I can't remember already. I think it was a transient uh, VZA, and this looks like shit. <laughs> Good. Now we have to take the second small PCB. And one thing you will notice is that on the small PCB and on the big PCB, on both lower sides is the transient uh, logo sign, the, Im the small transient image. So these, uh, where is it here? Good question. Okay. They they have to align somehow. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it's, on the, it's, here, on, it's the on the here. It's on the it's on the front panel. Ah, there you see it. And there you have the transient, and there you have the transient. And this is the direction how it comes together in the end. So, but this comes in the next step now. For first, we have to put all the, um, the, the audio key. jacks into place. So with the audio checks and potentiometers, if you have them on modules, is there are also different kinds of um, adjust them. Sometimes I put them on different without soldering, to, yeah. yeah, and um, put on the front panel. And yeah, same them. thing here. Yeah, yeah. It's, but I mean, you have to do it here anyway with, because of the LEDs. But I think here you also find just to flip it around and make one point and. Yeah, I can, but let's 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 do it like he he writes in the manual. I find it quite handy to insert the the audio jacks and the LEDs. Now the LEDs are all the same. It's bipolar LEDs, and they have also a polarity. The long is the plus. leg is plus. The short leg is minus. And on the PCB silk screen print. Uh, there is a plus. So, and you first, you only have to just th throw them in, hang them in, and make sure that the orientation, the polarity is correct, because this is essential. And then in the next step, you can put the, the panel on. And there, now these small transient uh, signs have to align. They have to be over each other on the PCB and on the front panel. And then you can put on some of these nuts. You don't have to do them all, you can. But I, I took only two of them. What tool do you use? The perfect nut tool set. <laughs> <laughs> Made by myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's available for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, then, yes, you have to push the air, uh, maybe show it from the side, I mean. Uh, then you have to push the, the LEDs through the holes in the panel. Uh, 
yeah, like this. And if the whole thing is standing on the on the jacks now, like this, make sure the LEDs look through the holes, everything is correct, and then you can start soldering. If you know true, do it like like we did with the resistor capacitor, yeah. just only just do one one leg first. Now if you have a module with a lot of potentiometers or um, audio connectors, and if they are not absolutely in line and straight, you might have a problem to get the panel on the modulator. So that's the reason why you often uh, put everything in place, then put the panel on top of it, flip it over, and then solder the whole thing, because then it definitely fits together later. And then after this procedure, um, you have to cut off all the all the legs. It has to be as short as possible because otherwise you might get short circuits. Um, oftentimes, I I try for the LEDs. You have one longer leg and one shorter. Long is plus, uh, short is minus. When I cut them down, finally. Oftentimes what I do is I leave the long leg a little bit longer than the other one. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep the difference because then if I have a mistake in the circuit, oh, you can I can still can way. see mm. the, uh, the polarity from the backside, you know. But in this case, we have to cut it absolutely flat because we need the space. Yeah, awesome. Okay. I Good. We can put the uh, panel on right now, or do we have to remove it? No, you can think... you can leave it on, I think. Okay. Now we have to put it together. So... Um, Yeah, identify the, what is what. The wedding. Top and down. The power header is it's down the lower here. side where the transient uh, image is on the, on the front panel. So then you can put it together and solder it. So this this might be a little bit tricky now. Um, so I will do it like this, I think. For me, it's also easy to solve them from this side. This is, this is a good example for maybe this kind of Kineta stuff again, if you like. Depends on what, what you want. Yeah. I was soldering it from this, I think, and it was quite handy for me. OK. Yeah, then, do it like but, that. but you can also uh, you have two possibilities you can solder it from here or you can solder it from there from this side or both <laughs> or both if you, yeah. if you are really hardcore you can do both <laughs> now everybody st steals the knete uh, from their children <laughs> yeah. play I think play their name yeah. so just do once and have a look if it's in a good position for yeah, our two it has HP. to be absolutely in this 90 degree angle. So we don't have a free HP module. That well, looks fine. Yeah.
yeah, then we are almost finished. I mean, there is these um, calibration procedure, uh, which we don't do now in the video, because if the, we will guide you until the module works, and then it's very easy to do the calibration if necessary. Um, but this would be a bit long now. So. Okay, that looks fine. Yeah. I also cut these other connector pins away. Yeah, go, go over the whole thing. Because the bottom of the big PCB is actually the side of the module. And if, if you have two of these small modules uh, back to back in your in your case, then uh, might get difficult. It get the double power. And I would say when everything looks fine, then we could check for short circuits in the in the power, right? With a multimeter? Yeah, first I have to what, put what on would you do? the nuts. Yeah, nuts is super, good. super important. <laughs> because this tool is so cool. There are many, many people, uh, including ourselves, we had problems with uh, these knurled nuts for the for the connectors, and you very quickly, if you use just the pliers or so to to tighten them, you ruin your module with scratches on the front panel, etc. So we made this tool set with all the uh, most common for the most common nuts in in the Eurorack world. Funky con hex and knurled and big split nut <laughs> and the Dupfer nuts. Good. All right. Then check the thing for short circuits. So we use the multimeter. Yeah, and there you have this beep function. Like this. There's annoying beeps on every multimeter I used. No. Beep. If you put the put them together, it beeps, and this is there is a contact. So what you don't want in this case is a contact between ground and plus, uh, ground and minus, or minus. plus and minus. So the middle, the three middle pairs, is ground, and on the lower side. It's minus 12 volts later. And on the upper side, it's plus 12 volts. So now you can check with this beep function between plus and ground. And between minus and ground. And between plus and minus. And if you would have a short circuit somewhere there in the... Like ground of ground. Yeah, ground and ground is grounded. Okay, that seems to work. So uh, better checking this than frying your module when you power it up and then magic smoke and... Yeah, if you have a better capability to check your models with multimeter and um, you're used to this, you can also use um, powered it up when you don't have any, any short circuit and... Um, measurement the outputs. I also had a problem once I had 12, 12 volts on an output where it had to be a 5 volt. Mm. So I destroyed another module. Mm. Um, so what a miss. But for the first, if you have no shortens on your power on your power modules, you're fine to power it up and any other measurements you can do it. After them. What's also very good, it's available as a DIY. Yeah. Yeah. I will show it here. There. Your Analog Audio Design. Very good module. 
uh, test three. That's one of the most uh, uh, selling um, modules. Kits, yeah. I think um, you can you can put it onto your onto your bus. You can you can see uh, what's going on on your bus, and you can uh, put modules into it and power your modules from that module. And then you see how much current they draw, etc. So if you have a problem like a short circuit in the in the DIY build, um, they take more current than necessary. OK. I would say Andy comes around with the module. We put it here on the case. And we see magic smoke or not. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Do we see this in the picture, Ronnie? Hmm? Do we see this cable on the picture? Uh, give me a second. No, I can. I can push it over a little bit. Ich kann auch ein Stück. Rausmachen, einfach. Ja. Very good. Okay. Then, if Red. you're really sure, all the orientations, everything is fine. Red stripe's down. Here's the red stripe. Red stripe is minus. Minus 12 volts. Wish me luck. What? Then, there's something going on. And if we take a signal now, we have this... Wait, let me see. Um. <laughs> Here. We took an LFO from the Leaf Audio uh, VCO expander. And if we use this and put it into the input, we see randomly generated so the input is switched to the outputs randomly. And it has two independent uh, rows, one and two. Trigger two, it also works. What you also can do is um, you can normalize them here on the, on the small PCB. Where, where is it? There. Can you see this? Up there, there are small uh, SMT um, pads. solder pads. And if you bridge them just by bumping a little bit of solder over it, then it should be bridged that one input is normalized to the second one. And then you have four random events going on in clock with the first input. So there it is. It's alive. You let's see this thing. <laughs> Very nice. And what we do now, I would say, is we end the official part. Um, we have the private chat going on. We can also switch cameras on there. Uh, we can guide the participants to finish their modules if it's not finished now. Um, but I think for the official part, for the live stream, it's good now. Um, we say thank you. And if you like, join our newsletter. Um, then you get, get a note about the next workshop and if we have special offers and stuff. Um, we will have a lot of stuff coming in now in April in the shop. New stuff is coming. Um, we will open a completely new category. Um, yeah, will be a surprise. Um, there will be a newsletter in early April, I think. Okay, and of course, uh, keep our Instagram in mind. I think this is the most uh, up-to-date channel for us almost daily. All right, ciao. Thanks to Bonedo. Uh, thanks to Transient. Thanks to Andy. Thanks to Ronnie. Greetings to Hagen, who is at home at the moment. Working like a crazy guy. Yeah, I don't know.
So, have a nice evening. Ciao. Bye. Sind wir aus? Sound.